Guys, welcome to Skirt Garage. My name is Connor. I am pumped to have you on the channel today. What I've got is a video about 10 unique features that only a true F-Type owner would know. These are pretty in-depth and I'm really excited to share them. However, I do have to say this before we get started. If you are a new uh, person on this channel and you're looking at potentially buying an F-Type, go ahead and leave a comment down below of things that you might have learned from this video. And if you are a current owner of an F-Type and I have forgotten something that I have not put on this video, please do me a kindness, put that on the comment section down below. That way, for any prospective owners or myself included, we can all learn a little bit about this car. Now, let's get started with this video. I hope you guys enjoy. Like always, hit that big old thumbs up and give me a subscribe. You guys know I'd love that. Let's get started with the video. <laughs> Guys, we're gonna start this list off with number one, the secret menu. And let me be honest, it's less of a secret menu in the fact that there's hidden, unlocked features of your car, but the reason why I'm calling it secret is because unless you saw this video, you probably wouldn't know how to get there. And the reason why I'm showing you how to find this is because it shows you everything about your car. Most importantly, it shows you the last software update your car has had. And this is really important for one crucial reason. As I've mentioned in other videos, and a few of you guys have already pointed out in the comments section, Jaguar has put a software patch or an update on the cars that has completely, not eradicated, but almost all the ludicrous pops, crackles, Rice Krispies, whatever you want to call them coming out of the exhaust. Now, each time I go to the dealership, I make sure to inform uh, my service advisor that I do not want him to change the software on the car because that's so endearing to me. I love the crazy pops and crackles that come out of the exhaust. So before I drop my car off, I check this and when I pick it back up, I check it because a lot of the times the workers inside of uh, the techs, I should say, inside of Jaguar, they think they're doing you a favor by changing out your software for newer software. So I'm gonna show you how to look at that right now. Okay guys, you're gonna jump in your car and you're gonna turn the car's ignition on, but you are not going to start the car. All right, we're getting everything all warmed up. Okay, then you come over here and you're gonna press and hold the valet button down. Okay. Uh, it always feels like you have to hold it down for a lot longer than you think. But what comes up is certain programming within your car's uh, basically hard drive. You have your video, your software version, system information, and things like that. What I'm going to do is click on software version. And this shows you the exact software that you're running. And like I said earlier, this is important to me because I love the big old, you know, cracks and burbles and everything that comes out of the exhaust so guys that is exactly how you do it let's move on to number two number two is the turning radius I know I know I know it's a turning radius but hear me out this thing turns on a dime it is the shortest turning radius I've ever felt not just in a sports car but in any car do you want some proof check this thing out having a competition with a Ford Fiesta. The smallest Ford that, that is on sale today in America is the Ford Fiesta. And not only that, but it is the 11th smallest car for sale in America also. Yet, this thing, this massively wide-tracked, huge sports car can turn two feet shorter. That is incredible. And not to mention, that's when I had these extra 15 millimeter spacers on either side. Wow. One thing that is kind of cool is it can definitely help you out if you are uh, kind of hanging the rear end out, if you're doing some major fishtails. All that opposite lock can help you avoid disaster. Pretty interesting to say the least. Let's move on to number three. Guys, for number three, we are going to move to the exhaust. Fun fact about the Jaguar F type exhaust is that the valves are open every single time you start the car. Whether it's a cold start, whether it's already been driven for a while, 
Uh, there's software in the car that programs the valves to be open for the first few seconds each time you start the car. I love that feature. However, I must be honest, it is extremely loud. Don't believe me? Take a listen. Like I was saying guys, I love this. I think it's really cool. It means that no matter if you're surrounded by a lot of people or you're just by yourself, you get this tremendous sound every time you start the car. I really enjoy it. However, you guys should know that it's very loud. So if you live in an apartment complex or your significant other really cherishes their sleep, it's definitely something to consider. You might just have to give your neighbors some cookies every now and again. All right guys, let's move on to number four. Guys, number four is the correct way to open and close the hood. Now, if you do not follow the exact recipe on how to do it, you still might find some success. I don't know. I know that for my car, if I don't do it exactly like this, one of the two sides where it latches down will not latch down correctly. So let me show you. You come in here, you open the door, you swing over, you hit the release right there. Okay, now that it is released and we can open the hood, this is actually kind of interesting. The entire hood, bonnet, whatever you want to call it, it is a single piece of aluminum. So if you yank on just one side, if you open it up from this side, every single time you have to open the hood, with time, theoretically, it could shift. What I do is I reach way over in the middle and I just get it started. I pull it up like that and then I come underneath it as such and I push it up all the way. Once the hood is completely open, you take this hand and you put it in one of the black hood vents. You take this hand, you put it in one of the black hood vents and together you come down and you press. <laughs> ah. Voila, there you go. That's how you correctly shut it. If you only press on one side or the other, only one half of the latch will be completely closed correctly. We are making good headway. We're on to number five. Now, number five is all about where you sit inside of the car in relation to where the car is in space. Now, specifically what I'm talking to is the enormous dash to axle ratio of this car. For whatever reason, we interpret a very long dash to axle ratio as being extremely sporty. That in conjunction with a low roof line. And so what ends up happening is if you're not very careful about the extra real estate, this entirely massive long hood you have, you can accidentally scratch the crap out of your front bumper on a curb or on whatever you are doing. And let me give you an example. Uh, picture this in your head with me. You're getting off work, you're meeting up with your significant other, you drive in, you wanna park next to her because you haven't seen her all day, you look over, you give her a little dainty smile or something in between, and when you jump out of your car, you realize that you are about two feet past her car and you just dinged the hell out of your front bumper. This hasn't happened to me, and I hope it never happens to you guys, but that's why I'm telling you. There's just a lot of real estate that sits out in front of you as you're sitting in the F-Type. So be careful not to pull up to those curbs real tight especially if you're trying to line up where you sit in the car with where someone else sits in the car because it is very different. Again, I'm sure you guys are very careful um, and you, you, know, you wanna treat your F-Type really nicely so you may even back it in, who knows what you guys do, but I'm bringing it up because it is unique to this car. There's only a few cars with a hood as long as this F-Type. All right, let's get moving on to number six. Okay guys, number six on the list is the exhaust soot that comes out of the exhaust pipes. Now, I'm bringing this up mostly for the new Jaguar owners or prospective owners that are thinking about getting the car. Here's why. You are gonna buy your car, it's gonna be kind of this honeymoon experience, you're gonna think it sounds great, you love it, so fun to drive, look sexy, all this stuff. You're gonna get home, park it, and when you come back out the next day, you're gonna see this. And you're gonna think, oh my gosh, I've got a differential uh, leak, I've got an oil leak, they sold me a bad car, blah, 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 blah. But that is actually not the problem. The problem is this. When designing this car, they made it really, really sexy. And they did something I haven't really seen in almost any other car. And that is, they raked 
the exhaust tips to be pointed upward. It's got this cool kind of pinched look where the top comes down and the bottom comes up and it makes it look uh, very, very sleek and very fast. Um, but what ends up happening is the combustion cycle that goes on in the engine department, it creates water and that water gets expelled through exhaust pipes. However, if your exhaust pipes are kind of raked upward, it's difficult for water to be evacuated. So what ends up happening is the water pools on the inside of the exhaust pipes. I think Jaguar knew this and so they actually cut or, or fabricated a type of relief point where the clamp is. And what ends up happening is the soot from inside of the exhaust pipes combined with the condensation of the water from the combustion cycle ends up dripping out of the exhaust pipes and it leaves this beautiful looking dry, almost looks like brake dust really to me, but it's a dry soot and it will be all over your garage just like this. Um, but yeah, it's endearing. It's almost like a pet leaving um, droppings in your garage. Anyway, let's move on. We have made it to lucky number seven and that is gonna be the visibility out of the Jaguar F-Type. Now, this thing looks like a freaking bullet and it's because this windshield is so raked and the roof line is so low that it has this amazing bullet or wedge shape that goes all the way back into where the car ends up slanting down again. Design wise, it looks incredible, but visibility wise, uh, it definitely leaves you wanting a little more. And let me explain why. I have set up this camera such that the camera lens is, is exactly lined up with where my eyesight is looking out of the car. And I'm gonna show you what it's like to drive this car at sundown. Because when you get sun in your face, you have to use the sun visor, right? When you pull that sun visor down and you're sat low in the car and you've got this very raked windshield, you literally have about six inches of visibility. And it has you looking like one of those superheroes with like the laser beam eyes. I don't know, I'm thinking of the X-Men guy. But the visibility is scant to say the least. You definitely get used to it. And I have to be honest here, I do think that my car is worse than others because I have these very tinted side windows. I have my sunroof shade normally closed. So I think all those things combined definitely add to the drama of that slant view. All right guys, let's move on. Spoiler alert, number eight on the list is the spoiler. That was a really bad dad joke, I'm sorry. However, it is number eight on the list and we're gonna talk about it. The spoiler, I always assumed before I bought the car that the spoiler would be under your control. You can decide when it's up or when it's down, but it doesn't really work like that. Actually, what ends up happening is the spoiler gets only activated while you're driving if you go over 70 miles an hour. Once it's activated, it won't retract or go back down until you've gone lower than 50 miles an hour. So between 70 and 50 miles an hour, it'll stay open as long as you previously went 70. Now, the only other way to get the spoiler up if you're not on the highway or going over 70 miles an hour is by putting it in um, spoiler maintenance mode. And that's what I've just done. The car has to be off. You then turn the ignition on and then hit the button and then it'll come flying up. The idea is that it allows you to clean the underside of the spoiler, uh, hence spoiler maintenance mode. I think it looks pretty cool. I wish you could control it. Um, some form members like to deactivate it altogether. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty neat. If you didn't know that, there you go. Let's move on to number nine. All right guys, for number nine, we're gonna talk a little bit about the exhaust system on the Jaguar F-Type. One would think that once you jump in the car and hit the exhaust button, that that would kind of be it, that that would be the only way of turning the valves on, but one would be wrong. There's actually three separate ways of getting the valves to become loud on this car, and I'm gonna explain them to you right now. Number one is by being in comfort mode and just hitting the accelerator pedal once you pass 4,000 RPM, the valves will automatically open and become very loud. Option number two is by jumping in the car and hitting that exhaust button. That button will change the threshold to open these valves at 1,500 RPM. So the valves will basically be open all the time unless you're either stopped or at a very tall gear cruising on the highway. 
Option number three, which is my favorite option, is by putting the car in dynamic mode, just pulling that little toggle back. What that does is actually open up the valves all the time. So whether you're idling, sitting in traffic, or whether you're bombing down the highway in a tall gear, it does not matter, the valves will always be on. Now, if you guys have seen a previous video I made about reliability, you guys will know that one of the major pitfalls that we've seen with the F-Type has to do with the active exhaust system. And I have a hunch, my hunch is this, owners are jumping in their car and they're pressing the active exhaust button, which opens the valves only at 1500 RPM. So if that said owner had a 20 minute commute with bumper to bumper traffic, the little valves might have to open and close about 50 times. And if you're doing that day in, day out with multiple commutes, it makes sense that after a few years, these little exhaust control modules are just burning out and they're making that active exhaust plunk that I talked about in the reliability video. So that's why when I jump in my car, if I want the uh, valves open and loud, I normally just go ahead and put it in dynamic mode. So they just have to open once. But that's just me. If you guys haven't seen my reliability video about the F-Type, go ahead and click up here and check that out. Anyways, what I'm gonna do now is show you what it sounds like in comfort mode, what it sounds like with the button press, and what it sounds like with the car in dynamic mode. Enjoy. guys number 10 this is the final thing that I want you guys to know as prospective owners or as current F type owners you guys can comment what you think as well but I do have to be honest I wish I would have known this and that's the only reason I'm bringing it up because I'm not a Debbie Downer type of guy but the sound system in the Jaguar F type is not that good I'm sorry I hate to say it but it's true with a name like Meridian Surround, you would think that it's a very sophisticated, great system, but it's just not that good. And if you go on the forums, you'll see the exact same thing. There's more topics on the forums about the sound system not being that good than there is about actual mechanical engine related problems that this Jaguar F-Type R has. It's pretty interesting to say the least. I would point out that you can change the settings enough that it can make it nice and when I say that the sound system isn't good let's put it into perspective the sound system is good if you're comparing it to like a Nissan Altima or like a base uh, Audi or Mercedes product but if you compare it to like the higher end Bowers and Wilkins of the Audi or the higher end Harman Kardon system in the you know Mercedes it will it will underwhelm you however the one very big positive about this whole thing is that if you do get tired of the kind of rattly raspy not the best sounding frequency of the stereo you can always do this guys that is going to do it for me this is taking quite a bit of time to get all these 10 things done correctly and how I wanted them. So if you've enjoyed this video, please hit that big thumbs up, leave a positive comment down below, and of course, subscribe. And actually, if you guys are on Instagram, I've had a lot of you reach out, ask me a couple car questions. I've really appreciated it, and it's been really fun to connect with you guys. So follow me on Skirt Garage on Instagram. I love you guys. Be safe, and we'll see you next video. Peace.